All right. Good morning and welcome to the David and David on Real Estate podcast. We are on episode 111. 111. That's a lot of ones. I'm so excited. John Fridas, thank you for joining us again. Uh, you're a realtor with Sutton Group Summit Realty, Platinum Award winner, and a video lover. And you use video all the time. And one of your favorite platforms is TikTok. Yes. And, and this is the one platform that I don't have an account personally. I don't have a personal TikTok account. I have a TikTok account for you know one of the companies I'm involved with, but I don't have a personal account. And uh, I've been resisting this platform for a really long time. And today, John, you're going to try to convince me why I should get my own TikTok account. Yeah, before you, I got to admit, I don't have a personal TikTok account either. So you're going to, so you got some tough selling to do here. We do have, a, our firm has a TikTok one and, and we're on that. And we're posting that all the time, but I don't have a personal account because it scares the, you know, what out of me. Yeah. I'm not sure how to use it. So I, so I choose not to, but tell me, tell us both why, like the benefits and, and why we shouldn't be afraid of it. Yeah. Okay. So first off, I'll start by saying, so we're all kind of in around the same age, I guess, maybe David. Uh, Thank you. Of course, really he's a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit younger, but so if I'm on TikTok, any one of you two can be on TikTok. And the reason TikTok, I, I focus on doing TikTok videos is not like this, you know, this epiphany and this hidden secret per se. It, there are great elements behind TikTok that you can leverage. But to be totally honest, the reason that I started it was I had a colleague friend of mine that I worked with in my past life that said, are you on TikTok? I'm like, not really. That's, you know, I'm focused more on Instagram. He's like, Dude, you have to get on TikTok. If you're not on TikTok, you're not getting your voice out there. Trust me. Even though the average age on TikTok is like between 18 and 35 or whatever it is, all those people, they're the ones that are decision makers out there in the economy, like a ton of them. So you need to be out there. So I thought, okay, let me let me get onto this TikTok thing. And as I started, I found that it was the easiest one to actually put video out on because Prior to that, I was doing a lot of, you know, just recording on my phone and then plugging into my computer, downloading it to my my you know, PC where I can actually edit it on an editing uh, platform and then email it up. This had everything embedded in it. It was like very intuitive. You know, you can add music to it. You can add different video clips or images, different, uh, you know, aesthetics. So it was very easy, easy to use. And the reason I think that it's important to consider getting on TikTok is because it's so influential. So many people that are on TikTok, they, you know, maybe maybe I'll change gears a little bit and say that the world right now, information is instant. So as soon as something happens out there, it's being broadcast across all different types of social media platforms. And I find TikTok is one of those that as soon as something is trending and really hot, People are memeing it or they're talking about it and it's out there constantly. So uh, everything that people want to get their hands on information wise, they tend to, I find TikTok is a big platform for that. And the video aspect, the entertaining aspect of it, I think is what captures people uh, on it a lot too. So, so do we have to be far, uh, funny to be on video? So you don't have to be funny to be on TikTok. You don't. I mean, there's a ton of... Uh, real estate agents that are on TikTok and they're not necessarily, you know, funny. And I'm on TikTok and I don't do a lot of funny videos. I've done some funny ones, you know, you know, when I first started, it's always, let's do the take with the, with the song uh, meme thing, you know, and I did a couple of those and I got some likes and it was fun, you know, but again, I use it more to get information out there and more and more it is transitioning from this solely, the sole entertainment platform to more of an information platform. But you need to be careful like what you put out there and how you put it out there. Because the thing with TikTok is the algorithm behind it was one of, if it is still, the most advanced algorithms to push information out to people based on what they had previously watched and seen. So, and what, what you've talked about. So I find because I do a lot of real estate content out there, but I, I get a lot of realtors that are connected to me. 
And what you want in TikTok is you don't, as a realtor, you don't want a whole bunch of other realtors watching your, your, your information. You want uh, buyers and sellers to watch it. So the content you put out shouldn't always be just real estate related. It needs to be a little bit broader than that so that you are going to capture potential buyers and sellers. And I really don't need a whole bunch of other realtors uh, stealing information from me and putting out videos, even though I shamelessly do that myself sometimes. But it, it's more about, you know, getting information out to buyers and sellers. And it's the algorithm in there that I think is one of the most advanced algorithms. Now, Instagram is caught up and a lot of the other platforms have caught up, made it a lot easier. But that's primarily why I started using TikTok and why I think TikTok is a really good platform to get out there. So when you're doing your videos, like you're you're getting videos out on the other social media platforms as well. Yeah. So are you recording different videos to put on TikTok or is it the same videos that you would be putting out on Instagram, you would also be putting on, on TikTok or, or do you gear it a little bit differently? Uh, great question, David. So I would say, you know, generally I put them out on all platforms because what I'm trying to put out, I try and put it out so that it is, you know, suitable to all platforms. But there are times that I'll put something out on TikTok that I'll also put on Instagram, but I decide this is not like LinkedIn worthy right? It's just not kind of a LinkedIn post. You don't want, it should be a little bit more professional if I put something out a little bit less professional. So from that perspective, not every single platform should receive the same sort of content, uh, sort of in line with how I said, you know, there are different times to post on different platforms uh, as well. Um, but uh, yeah, in terms of how I go about it, so when I, I use TikTok because it's the easiest to use, and then I download my TikTok video to my uh, phone, and then from there, I will share it out to uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, if suitable, Facebook. Um, because if you share directly from TikTok, there are competing platforms and they don't like to receive it. If you share directly from TikTok out, they'll like block a lot of the data in it or information and you won't get their reach that you're looking to get on it. So download it from TikTok directly to your phone, into your photo album, and then upload it to your other social media platform. And, and John, do you do you ever like look at the topics that are trending on TikTok and then try to make a similar topic so that you know you kind of uh, ride that wave of of what's trending to get in front of uh, and reach a, a different audience? Uh, so that's a great point. I haven't necessarily done that, although I've been very aware of some of the trending topics on there. Um, some of them are very controversial sometimes, so it really depends too. But I mean, it is a strategy you can definitely employ. And I think it, there's a lot of value in doing that and riding that wave. I personally have just decided not to be part of that roller coaster per se up and down so much and try and be a little bit more consistent. But in saying that, I mean, one thing you have to do on social media is you need to constantly monitor and analyze kind of what's happening out there. Who's watching? What kind of views are you getting from what type of people at what time of day to, you know, adjust your approach? And uh, as you figure that out, then you adjust what that looks like. And if, you know, it's determined that, hey, you know, I'm getting a lot more views when I talk about this really hot topic, then uh, I'm going to do a lot more of that. So I'll give you an example. Like the one um, uh, video that I put out that has the most views, and it's not a ton. Like I'm not like a super hot trender, but it has like, you know, 20 some thousand views and like a few hundred comments is, is a video I did back in March, which was right before the Bank of Canada was going to make a big announcement. And the approach I took on this was like, so two days before I said, uh, what will happen on Wednesday's Bank of Canada announcement? What are the possible outcomes? And I basically did like a four and a half long, maybe five minute video that was about three potential outcomes and what would be the ripple effect across the real estate market if they decided to go in any one of those directions. And that one got a ton and a ton of views. It was because it was a hot topic in our localized area because of interest rates and how it was going up and how it was affecting the market so much that so many people were interested in learning about it because it affected so many of them. So from that perspective, yes, it's important to identify what topics 
are going to relate to what people want to hear and listen to, but necessarily to try and uh, ride those short little hot trending waves. I don't think you necessarily need to try and strive for that, but somewhere in between, I think is, is a good approach. I, I think what realtors need to realize is that there's a very small percentage of the total population that have actually made a buying or selling decision and are actually in the market. And, and I want to put some numbers out here because I want to put this into perspective for our listeners. Uh, the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board has about 60,000 active listings. If we take another 60,000, say, okay, those are the people who have made a decision to sell their home. If we double that number and say, okay, there's for the 60,000 that have made a decision to, to sell their home, there's also 60,000 buyers who are just coming into the market that have made a decision to you know, buy a home. Let's call these like first time home buyers or, or, or what, whatever. That's 120,000 people. The GTA has a population of 4 million. If we divide 120 into 4 million, that's 3% of the market. Now think about it. So many realtors are creating content for 3% of the market, right? You want to hit that 3% that are, have made a buying or selling decision. What about the other 97%? This is the issue that we're facing. And John, you, you nailed the nail on the head when you said that there, you have so many realtors following you on, on social media. And the reason you have so many realtors is because entrepreneurs want to see what other entrepreneurs are doing to grow their business. It's the whole FOMO effect. Right. But when you create content, keep that 97% in mind when you're creating content. And that 97%, you know, they're busy individuals that have lives. Their kids are in organized sports. You know, they, they care about hockey. They care about the Raptors. They, they care about, you know, making ends meet at the end of the day. They care about what's for dinner. They care about, you know, what's happening in their neighborhood, what they can, what they can do. That's what those 97% people care about. And sure, they care about the market updates and they care about, you know, what's happening in their neighborhoods, but they have so many Asian friends and, and, and real estate news sources that they already follow where they get that information all the time that when they see in their social media, they just scroll. And those listings are really not landing with those people, right? So when you create content, create content for the 97% of people who have not made a decision to be in the market. And I think, you know, I think the easiest way to do that is to focus on, you know, building wealth through real estate is that having had that investor's approach because mm -hmm. life is expensive. It, it's tough to make ends meet out there. And I think the only way you can stay relevant to those 97% uh, of the population consistently is if you add enough value to them where you actually move the needle in a big way and make a big impact to their future. And, and the best way of doing that is you know, to constantly talk to them about building wealth, about leveling up, about, you know, crushing their financial goals through real estate investing. I think that's how you're going to get in front of them the easiest. But, you know, focus on that 97% and create content for that 97%. Because if you constantly try to catch that 3% of the people who have made a buying or selling decision, you're going to miss the mark 97% of the time. You, yeah, you're bang on with that. Um, and that's why the content that you put out needs to be cast a little wider, to your point. And it needs to be focused more on the fact that, you know, providing valuable information or being funny, but information that will give people, you know, um, I guess a foundation for understanding the real estate market or real estate tips and advice, because you're not a buyer or seller today, but most people aspire to become a buyer and seller. They want to own real estate. They realize it's one of the best investments, if not absolutely the greatest investment you can make. So they want to be uh, knowledgeable. So putting out information that is not necessarily just geared for somebody who's about to make the buying and selling decision, but general information that's going to help them in their everyday uh, financial decisions through life, 
is valuable. And that is the 97% you're talking about. And that is where, to your point, I think you should be focusing 97% of your content on the general information um, uh, to, to that group of people that you just want to help them become more knowledgeable in the real estate market, you know, providing the advice and tips to help them better navigate. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think it's just general advertising principles too. Like you don't do post a TikTok video and then sit back and say, well, how many leads did I get from that video? Or someone contacted, oh, I, you know, say, oh, I, I contact you because I saw this, this one video. And uh, it, it never really works that way. It's more of a cumulative effect. Like, the, you know, they're getting to know you because they keep seeing stuff posted by you. They're getting to know you not just as a realtor, but a, a bit of a, your personality and what you're all about. And then at some point in their life, they're ready for their next real estate move. And okay, well, who should we use? Well, you know, I remember I've been following John mm -hmm. and uh, he's been, you know, really good, knows his stuff. Seems like, you know, he's a great guy. You know, he does this and the community does that. You know, he's got a sense of humor. I'm really comfortable with him. Let's, let's try John, right? So you just never know how far down the road that's going to be. That's where the 97 is going to show up at some point, because eventually they're there, right? Eventually everybody moves at some point and usually a few times. So you want to be, you, you want to be part of the conversation and, you know, and, and have that in the back of their mind. And like, oh yeah, let's, 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 let's try John. I've been listening to him, watching him for, for years, right? That's that's exactly it. It's you are that's where the consistency comes in too, right? Like if you're not consistent and and you know, like let's say you fall off for a month and then that person makes that buying or selling decision that month and you're not in front of them. Yeah, then, John may have retired. You know? yeah. <laughs> all, all that other work you did for two years, you know, missed the mark, right? So the consistency mm -hmm. is also so important. You catch them at the right time when they make that buying or selling decision. Absolutely. Be consistent. Uh, be visible as much as you can. Uh, absolutely. And you're right, David. It's not uh, David K. It's not the uh, the fact that you're going to get a sale from, you know, a certain video or some, you know, it will happen eventually, but it's more that the awareness. They know who you are. They know what you're all about. They're familiar with you. And, and, and part of being familiar with a realtor is more than just hearing about real estate or even tips it's it's knowing their personal life so and this has been i'll be honest and open this has been a challenge for me i was never very big on social media before i became a realtor i've always been a much more private person you know love being together with people love people but you know i wouldn't be so open about what's happening in my life but in this business and generally it, people want to get to know who you are so you want to also be very uh conscious of putting out material that is absolutely completely related to just your personal life family events where you're going on the weekend people fall in love with lifestyles right you don't need to have you know pretend that you're somebody who's gala going out to galas every friday night but just be authentic you're going for a walk in the park and you see the sun breaking through uh, a group of branches in the fall and it's like wow that's awesome take a snapshot and just capture that moment and share it with everybody because it's the same moments like that, that people uh, enjoy themselves. So you, you, you connect personally with people that way. So making sure that you have the right balance of getting out your information, but also sharing those life moments with people and who you are is really key. Awesome. John. Uh, a great episode. We're running short on time. We're going to have to, I I've got to just ask him quickly about the book behind him because I wanted to uh, to bring that. Uh, you've got a book of uh, uh, Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules for Life. And I've been yeah. looking at that as we've been recording these episodes. And, and one of the reasons I'm, I it, it really caught my attention is because my partner, Jonathan, uh, you know, this week, he, he wrote a book and it's uh, being it's out on Amazon. You can pre-order it now. There's my little commercial for them. <laughs> and it's called The Bible 3.0, The Six Commandments of the Chosen Life. So I've been kidding. I'm like, I'm, I'm writing a book too, but I, I've got seven commandments. So like I've, I won up <laughs> them. And, 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 you know, you can have, if you have six, no, I, we can do it for seven. And I see this book behind you. It's got 12. And I, am, oh. I Jonathan's going to watch this. He's going to be like crushed that someone's out there with 12 rules and he's only got <laughs> six commandments yeah no it's uh 
It's yeah, I have it there just because I recently have uh, read the book, listened to the audio book as well. And uh, I just have um, a real appreciation for Jordan Peterson in terms of his uh, way he thinks. He has a very brilliant mind. I understand he can be a very controversial figure, but if you if you kind of, I guess, look beyond some of that and look at the content that he's giving, it really is valuable information on how to live your life. So I, I find that uh, I try and live my life a lot like what I've been able to learn there. And it's been a lot of valuable tips. And not to say that, you know, six, you know, tips aren't better than 12. It's not the number, you know, but it's the value behind each one. But uh, yeah, that's kind of just the story behind the book. I, I just really like him. And I think it's a really valuable read. Yeah. To anybody who hasn't looked into Jordan Peterson, I've been following Jordan for about four years. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a big uh, fan of Jordan Peterson. I'm a big fa fan of the way he thinks. Um, I, I agree with you, John. I think, it, you know, there, he could be very controversial, but I think uh, he's very pure in his thought process and very logical in the way he thinks. And it's, it's uh, you know, he's so well-researched and so well-grounded in historical precedent mm -hmm. that, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it, it's almost uh, uh, refreshing listening to some of his concepts and some of his ideas. So anybody who hasn't had a chance to look into Jordan Peterson, look him up. I, I think you're going to be uh, pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Guys, I have to end it here. John, it was an absolute pleasure having you on. Like, great information. Uh, every single time we have, you know, any sort of guests, it's, it's, it's amazing what we're able to extract. So thank you for sharing uh, your experiences. Thank you for sharing your struggles. Thank you for being so authentic with us. Um, and uh, David, I don't know. What do you think? Are we going to get a TikTok account? I think we're going to have to try it. Yeah, I think it, uh, I got to gotta do it. Got to do it. <laughs> Just do it. All right, everybody. We're going to put our TikTok handles in, in the description below. Uh, look us up, connect with us, and let's go on this journey together. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate it.